All right, so I'm done. Now my question to you is, and this is the most important step, to complete the square, this is the critical step here. Right? Now my question to you is, why did that work? Why did the magic, the magic phrase is halve that number and then square it, halve it and square it. Why does that do anything? Why is that useful? Any suggestions? Yeah, sorry. Okay, so what you're trying to do, I guess, if I'm understanding you correctly, Selene, is you're trying to reverse engineer this. Does that make sense? Like, you guys are really good at these, right? So you can sort of imagine, oh, right, if I was reverse expanding, okay, what would I have to add to this in order to have that factorize, right? However, there is a better way to understand why it's randomly halving and squaring. And if you are not sick of me doing these things yet, okay, then get ready because I'm going to show this to you visually. Maybe you want to get a ruler out for this part because it'd be really useful. Have a look at this. This line here. This is where we began. Do you remember the first thing that we did before we actually completed the square? Is we rewrote it like so. You remember that? Okay. Now what I want to do is just like I proved to you why a plus b or squared is not a squared plus b squared. In fact, it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay. So this is how we drew that. How would you draw this? Just think about it for a second. I will show you. We've done this a few times now, right? We did it for the difference as well. We did it for a, a few different kinds of um, situations. How might we draw it? Suggestion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you drew it the same, except A and B would be the same way. Yeah, yeah. So if I think about like this x squared, right? x squared is like one of these shapes here. Well, as the name suggests, because no one reads this as x to the power of 2, it's going to be a square. Yeah? So I'm going to draw this guy here as a square. Okay, so here's x squared. It's x by x. Okay. Now if that's what x squared looks like, keep in mind, I don't know how big or small this square is. The whole point is that x can be anything. Right? What might this look like? Hmm, 6x. Now, the other problem is, I've got a scale on here, so I've got to use a little bit of license creatively. I'm going to say, if this is x squared, then 6x is kind of like, well, it's, it's 6 times x, right? Well, if x times x gives you a square, then 6 times x will give you like a rectangle, right? Now, in the case where x was 6, it would also be a square, but you don't know that. x could be anything. So I'm going to draw it like this. Like so, right? Imagine this is x over here. They're the same here and here. I don't really know how long it is in comparison to 6, so I'm just going to make that a length there. Do you agree that that rectangle is 6x? You okay with that? All right, so far so good. Now that's just one half of the equation. On the other half, I've got 11. For reasons that become clearer in a second, I don't really care how big 11 is. I'm just going to draw them over there. Okay. Now, I want you to think, what was that magic thing we did to turn this into something we could factorize? We halved it halved it, and then we squared it, right? Now, I want you to think back to when we did all these constructions, right? Sometimes you can pull something out like this one. Do you remember this one? That makes the construction more useful, okay? Now, halving, halving. If I gave you a cake, and it was like a rectangle, like this, halving it would just be slicing across the middle. Do you agree? I'll give you two pieces, okay? So on the next line, we didn't write this before, but I want to visualize it. On the next line, I'm going to do the halving, like that. Do you agree that that's just taking that rectangular cake and slicing it into? Yeah. So far, so good. Okay, now what does it look like? Here's x squared, nothing's changed, right? What have I got now, instead of that one long 6x? Well, I've got this one, that's 3x, do you agree? And then I have another one that's also 3x. So far so good, are you with me? And then of course I've got the right hand side. Gonna need a little more space, but we'll get there. Now what's the point? I wonder if your gears are turning yet. 
Do you remember with this, I had to do another kind of slicing thing like this. In fact, I think if you recall, something like this. There was my a squared minus b squared. Do you recall? Big square, take away a little square. What did I slice off? Do you remember what I sliced off? Yeah, this part over here, I said, hey, cut him off, right? Why did I do that? What was the point? Because I moved it around, remember? He came around like this. Do you remember that? And so here's your a plus b that we were searching for that wasn't in the diagram, okay? So I sliced it off so I could move it. Okay, look, 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 look. You've got two pieces now, 3x and 3x. Where could you put them? Here's what I'm going to suggest. Um, these, both, these rectangles, they both have length x, right? That means that just like here, see these lengths here? They should match up to this one, shouldn't they? Because that's x as well, yeah? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to move one over. So I'm going to take, say, this one down here. I'm just going to jam it up against the bottom of it. Is that okay? Now don't forget, this is um, x high, uh, wide, sorry. This is x high and this is how high again? It's three, cool, okay. Now, this guy down here went across. What am I gonna do with this guy? Well, just like with this, before I put it onto anything, I'm going to turn it around because this is x here, right? So I'm just gonna stick it over here. Is that okay? Do you agree that I could put the 3x there instead if I shifted it around? What was the width of that rectangle again? The width is now 3. Do you agree? Yeah. Now, it looks to me like I have something that's kind of like an, I don't know, what would you call it? Maybe an incomplete square? Do you agree? Yeah. And so all it needs is something to be added to it, right? What do you add? Well, well, you add nine, don't you? Why is it nine? Why is it nine? Because it's because of course it's nine because it's three times three. So you oh surprise surprise you completed the square. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Aha, aha, aha. Right now I know why it's called. You see why I'm obsessed with names because if you really understand why something is called what it is, then you understand it better. Okay. Now that's the nine. You've completed the square, but of course, you've got to add something to the other side as well. I don't really care what it is, but this is a square that's now 20 big. It's a square. So, how big are the lengths? It's a square. The area, the area is 20. So, the side length is... Now, as neat as that was, right, that x plus 3 equals root 20, I will admit, the one <laughs> shortcoming of this is that, well, I'm missing half the solutions, aren't I? What, what's the other solution? Negative. Negative, right? And this is the way Greeks used to do all of their maths, right? Which is why Greeks had no need for negative numbers. All of their maths came out of geometry, like, you know, Pythagoras, okay? But this is why completing the square does its thing, okay? 